Hi, my name is Meadow Kaufeld. I'm a wildlife biologist and I teach in the Natural Resources Department at Atasca Community College here in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Today I'm here to discuss with you the process of aging and sexing ruffed grouse. I have two study skins here that I prepared a few years back to demonstrate uh, sex. Um, one of the main differences, obviously, the immediate differences you see between male and female is size. But if you don't have two birds of known sex in hand, it's difficult to determine this. We do know that males on average are much larger than females. There are other metrics like length of tail, rough, etc. that are longer or um, more pronounced than they are with females. Some people depend on superciliary markings, not always consistent. Um, same thing with tail bands. Some folks believe that tail band that is interrupted uh, belongs to a female. And what I'm talking about the tail band is this uh, sub terminal band here, this dark band. And what I mean by interruption is that there's a break here in the center of that tail band. Um, but I will tell you that sometimes that occurs in males, and so that's not a reliable way to uh, sex a grouse. So, um, when in hand, the best way to sex a grouse without looking internally is to look at these feathers here in this region here. It's called a rump patch, or the rump feathers uh, in layman terms. But a male grouse have two light spots on these rump feathers. And I'm talking about two light spots that are stacked on top of each other, one on top of the other. They are not white per se. Uh, they're not even light colored always. They're lighter than the rest of the feather that's there. And so in order to determine whether or not it's a male or female, you need to look at multiple feathers in this area because sometimes there's an anomaly where one feather or several feathers may only have one patch. They don't necessarily represent the entire uh, area of feathers. So look at multiple feathers. Males will have one, two on top of each other. One way to remember that is that males have two testes and so males have two spots. Female, on the other hand, only has one light spot on these rump feathers. You can see this bird is a different color face, so a slightly different color representation. But again, there's only one light spot here at the top of these rump feathers, whereas males have um, more than one, typically two stacked on top of each other. Again, I'm not talking about white. I'm not talking about uh, anything but a color that's lighter than the rest of the feather. Uh, so there's one spot on female, two spots on males. Like I mentioned, there are other things like length of tail, weight, etc. Um, but males and females do tend to overlap on the lower end of male weights and the higher end of female weights. So again, the best external in the hand method is to look at those rump feathers. If you're truly at question and you really want to know, open the bird up and look for testes or reproductive tracts. That's 100%. Um, so, the other thing that's interesting about rough grouse, and I mentioned this a little bit ago, is that there are a lot of different color phases. When it comes to uh, this lesson here, we really aren't too concerned about uh, color phases, just looking at sex determination. Alright, so the next thing to look at is aging of grouse. A grouse, like many birds, uh, can only really be aged physically without marking an individual um, from a, as a juvenile or an adult. And so in the case of ruffed grouse, we can tell a bird that is young of year or a bird that was hatched the previous spring from an adult during the fall following uh, the summer that they lived through, basically. Um, during hunting season, they are a hunted species, we can tell by wing wear or the outer two primaries, we can tell the wear on them, uh, whether or not they're adult or juvenile. So when I'm talking about primary and secondary feathers, this one has a split because it's dried, but basically these rounded feathers here in the back, or would be located here on your hand, if your hand represented a wing, um, those are the secondary flight feathers, and we're looking at the primary flight feathers. And so primary would be on your hand, kind of the equivalent there. Um, and again, uh, these birds, like many gallinaceous birds, uh, the juveniles do not replace all of their wing feathers. It takes a lot of energy to produce a feather, and when you're a juvenile uh, going into fall and winter, especially here in places like northern Minnesota, it's very important to be able to fly and take care of yourself. And so one of the theorized reasons for this lack of replacement on tail or wing feathers is that these birds are conserving energy and these wing feathers will suffice uh, until the next molt. So with adult birds, you will see that oftentimes they are replacing these outer two primaries. Again, when we're looking at primary feathers, we're looking at these wing feathers, right? And when we count feathers, we count from the inside out. And in this case, uh, we would count to the outside primaries and we would look at these outer two. And so with adults, 
in early season or a bird that's harvested early to mid season, oftentimes we'll find one that is replacing these outer two primaries. And so that's a dead giveaway for an adult if it is mirrored. So mirrored being that it's on both sides of the wing, not just an anomaly on one side. Maybe a bird was predated and the body has been forced to replace those feathers. So looking at this wing right away, I know this is an adult because these wing feathers are being replaced, the outer two. Whereas this is a juvenile, and when you look at these outer two wing feathers compared to the rest of the wing feathers, we see some wear and knife shaping and also some nicking. And so that kind of gives me an indication that that's a juvenile and oftentimes in the right light, you can actually even see that there's a slight color variation. Feathers that are older and tend to be more exposed to the elements or for a longer period of time tend to have a brownish tinge, whereas the bird's um, newer feathers all are a little more steely gray uh, tinge to them. Very subtle. But when you look at a couple hundred to a thousand wings, uh, you begin to pick up on these things. All right, so I will show some very specific photos that go through this uh, determination. I've got a couple of wings here, but if you practice and you look at a lot of wing photo pictures, you'll be able to get to the point where you're pretty proficient at telling the difference between adult and juvenile. Okay, so we will start with the female. This is the one that is most obvious. Here is the rump feathers or the rump patch. And as we can see, here is an individual feather right here. And we can see that there's only one spot there. This is the next feather, one spot there. Again, only one light spot there. There's a faint one there at the bottom, but again, it's just a large predominantly prominent feather spot there. So this is a female. This is a male. And here, if we look, there's one, two spots. Let's find another location. There's a single feather. One, two. Again, one on top, one, two. That's what I was talking about earlier. They're kind of stacked. They're not side by side, they're stacked. Here's another one. One, two, and even farther up on the back here, a single feather. One, two. So, for comparison, once again, we have the female here just one light spot is very obvious. Male, not so obvious in this particular individual. Recall earlier I said you need to check multiple feathers on the rump patch. You can see there's a light spot here, but it's not very obvious. This bird is not as obvious as some of them, but again, you need to check multiple tail feather or rump feathers to see if you can see that one, two spot. All right, that's the difference between males and females in regards to rump feathers, female, male. Okay, now we've got grouse wings. Now recall that I said that grouse, adult grouse will replace their outer two primaries, nine and ten, but juveniles will not. And so that hunting season or that fall following summer and spring reproductive events, we can tell in the beginning fairly accurately if it's an adult or a juvenile bird based off of these outer two primary flight feathers. This is a good example of an adult. You can see these wing feathers, these outer two primaries are fresh new feathers. They are relatively well rounded. The feather margin is relatively entire. There are no nicking or major wears. And then I like to compare those feathers to this third from the outside primary feather. It's a good indication that um, if these two feathers are consistent, they're likely both new and therefore we have an adult. So that's the first example of an adult grouse right there. Okay, so our next example shows some wear 
you can see already that there is some shape difference between these two. You can see that number three, or the three from the outside, which is really eight, is kind of squared off and rounded. You can see it's really kind of smooth on the edges of the margin of that, that feather there. But when we compare it to nine and 10 here, we see that they're relatively sharp, or what we call or refer to as knife shaped. And there's wear on there. So this is a juvenile. This is our first example of a juvenile. This next bird, our next example. We'll go a little faster as we get familiar. What do you see there? Nice, smooth feather margins on 10 and 9. And they compare well to this third from the outer, or 8. Right? So 8 certainly replaces on both adults and juveniles. And that means that um, if 8 is consistent with 9 and 10, these, these 9 and 10s are likely been replaced. And so again, smooth, entire, even kind of rounded or squared off edges, new primaries on the outer wing adult. Okay, what do we see here? This is um, a wing that has been soiled a little bit by either blood or bodily fluids. It happens oftentimes. But if with a little bit of grooming and preening, we can see that there's some major wear on this first, or number 10, so the most outer primary feather. It's also obviously a very nice shape. Uh, nine has got some wear and breakage too. So feel fairly confident saying that this is a juvenile. Okay, here's our next example. Again, we're looking at another wing that has been damaged or get some bodily fluids on there. And uh, again, that happens in the game bag um, or when you handle the bird or maybe the bird is retrieved by a dog or while the bird is fluttering on the ground. Um, and so when I preen these feathers out, this primary I can't seem to get to preen out or clean up so I can see the shape of that feather. But when I compare nine to eight, relatively rounded, even a little square on the end, not knife shaped and consistent with eight. I'm gonna go with adult. Moving a little faster here, nine and 10. If you look closely, there's nicking as well as some wear and overall knife shape, juvenile. Next example. 9 and 10. Can I groom it till it's that lead, or feather margin is entire? Smooth, rounded, adult. Okay. So this is an interesting one. This is knife shape. You can see some nicking and wear on that feather. Same with this one. And then number eight is actually shorter than that number nine and it's being replaced. This one is a juvenile. Okay, next example. Rounded, smooth feather margins, entire. This feather is also quite a bit shorter. And so I'm gonna go ahead and look. Sure enough. We see here at the base that this is a pin feather, or the she thing right there is invisible. So this feather is replacing. So in addition to the overall, overall shape, we know that that outer primary is being replaced. Therefore, we have an adult. We'll see that a lot in early season. In fact, this is an example of a bird because early season is when these birds are coming out of molt and they're finishing their feathers for that coming season, that winter. And so we have this bird here, the outer two primaries are definitely short. They're being replaced. You can see the sheathing here at the bottom from the pin feather stage right here, right there. Um, and of course, you know, you can tell they're fresh if you just look at the shape. This is an adult. Next example. Mm, look at these feather margins. You can see that they're kind of knife shape. There's a little bit of nicking and wear on there. 
and uh, compared to the third from the outside primary, there's definitely wear there. Juvenile. Here we are again. Knife shaped, shows wear, juvenile. guys a chance to look at these. Right there. What do you think? Lots of wear, some nicking, knife shaped, juvenile. And once again, see that shape difference? A little bit of wear on those other two primaries. Juvenile. This one's a little more difficult. This one's got a little narrower profile, but these feathers are really clean, very little wear. I'm gonna go with adult on that one, relative to this third from the outside, or number eight primary here. Shape is consistent. That margin is entire. I'm going with adult. Next bird. Okay, you can see that this feather is relatively smooth, rounded, not totally knife shaped. It's a little sharp, but this one comparing it, you know, it may be a little questionable, comparing it to number eight. I'm gonna go with adult on this one. Recall that this is relatively subjective and uh, that there is some open for interpretation of some of these individuals. Okay. What do you see here? When you look at this wing profile. What do you see here? These two, the outer primaries, are obviously short. Do you remember what that means? Well, if you don't, these, the sheathing in there. See that sheathing? Adult, right? Adults are the ones that replace those outer primaries. Our right, last example here. Groom this feather up. Mm -hmm. This one's a little variable, but when I look at comparing these two the shape to that feather, and this one here is a little sharp, I'm going to go with the juvenile on this one. All right, so hopefully you know that it is subjective. There is some variation there. But if you look at a lot of them and you go with your gut feeling, your initial impression, you'll get to where you can pick out adult from juvenile. Uh, when you have a bird in hand, it's much better to look at them right away than after you put them in your game bag. It becomes much more difficult. Thank you.